Greetings, everyone. I would like to speak today about misconceptions in astrology interpretations. I'm going to speak about the signs and how we tend to get attached to certain ideas, maybe prejudices about certain signs, some of whom are very popular. You know, the most popular signs among astrologers are usually Aquarius and Sagittarius. And the Virgos and the Scorpios get the bad rap. So maybe it's time to change some of that. So those who are usually getting all the praise are going to be more scrutinized. And those who usually are getting the bad rap are going to get some different perspectives. So uh, it's going to be educational, I think. And let's go. Of course, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. This way I can keep doing what I'm doing here and provide free content. So you're supporting the, the artist. And of course, uh, I'm inviting you to keep considering taking your astrology studies more deeply and get a proper education, you know, study the star, become part of the circle of star knowledge people. So the program I'm offering is about two to three years long and there are four tracks you can choose from depending on your level of commitment. And it is a life-changing program. It's not just about learning astrology it changes your life. It's deep. And, you know, so many people went through life-changing experiences as they joined the program. Um, becoming an astrologer is also allowing you to have a flexible profession you know you can work from anywhere you can be the digital nomad and you are in charge of your own schedule so it has a lot of perks you're not only doing something you are super enthusiastic about but you're also having a quality of life working with people who are into their own personal development and you're doing good for the world hopefully. And having a proper education is really important because astrology is out there. And like we're going to explore today, there are so many prejudices, you know, it's a little bit of a wild card whereby astrology becomes more visible, more used globally. And yet the risk is that people, you know, get the wrong ideas, misinterpret things, and give not just bad advice, but enhance those prejudices. Um, if you want to go slow, you can choose particular topics of interest. So if you want to study about the ascendant, about health, about a particular planet, you know, like there's a workshop on Chiron, on the Yod, etc. Just go to my website and you select education by topic, library of topic. I also want to let you know that there are several options for foreign speaking uh, people. There's a whole program in Turkish, in Japanese. Um, the Neptune book is going to come out soon in Spanish. And there's a course on relationship and articles in Hebrew and some articles in French, as well as Portuguese and Norwegian. So again, on the website, go to education, studies, and then select international or foreign language, something like that. Now, so what is... What are the misconceptions? For example, 
Aries being the first sign, fire sign, is often thought to be a sign that reflects selfishness. Me, me, me. And I think it's really misleading. And it's, for most cases, it's wrong. Because the fact that Aries are very connected to themselves and they are in this process of becoming, you know, it's that birthing process of coming into this world and learning to take charge of their own destiny can make it appear that they are self-centered and that they don't only care about themselves. But in reality, it's a very pure, primal archetype. And so the Aries energy can be very devotional because Aries are born you know, with tons of energy. Usually the, it's a sign that has to do with the management of energy. You know, the risk of Aries, the, the health risks of Aries are related to anemia and fatigue. So, you know, there is a flip side to that abundance of energy. But in, in reality, uh, Aries are actually devotional and they're very generous. So that, that aspect of self-focus and self-centeredness, it's not a selfish. It's mostly about them needing to do what they need to do not waiting for others to make decisions for them or uh, to start something. They, they, they can't wait. And so it's actually the archetype of the hero in the sense that Aries, um, in their devotion, in their commitment, and in their involvement, um, are, are very idealistic. And because they are doer, you know, when you combine doing with idealism, you have people who can go very far. And you have the protesters, those who will be on the front lines of campaigns, of change, and they will indeed do it their own way, and they will do it individually. They're not going to wait for approval. So there's a difference between selfishness and individualism. So the individualistic signs are usually the fire signs and Aries is number one. So the number one is exactly that. I realize I am the one I've been waiting for. So Aries, another thing that is often not related to Aries, you know, we tend to forget that they are extremely artistic. It's one of the most artistic signs in the Zodiac. Um, you'll see in all mediums of expression, whether it's musicians or graphic design or, uh, you know, fine arts, they, they communicate through that non-verbal expression to the something that has a statement but not just with words so a lot of you know different layers to aries taurus taurus is often seen as the bull the cow you know love food and a bit lazy and sluggish and so there's this tendency to portray Taurus as, uh, you know, slow and stubborn and not wanting to change anything. And of course, you know, all these prejudices and misconceptions have some truth. I'm not denying that um, Taurus don't like food. But there's a whole relationship around food because Taurus has to do with the senses. And so 
that ability to say this tastes good and this doesn't, this feels good and this doesn't, is important in our way to navigate the environment, to identify what is poison and what is nutritious. So the use of the senses definitely make Taurus uh, indulgent in that sense. And if we speak about health, uh, Taurus are going to be vulnerable to thyroid issues, metabolism, as well as diabetes and the sweet tooth. But because Taurus is a sign that relates so deeply to the to resources, they can indeed be extremely resourceful. And you will see that there's genius in Taurus. The reason is that they are so self-sufficient. Taurus lives in an inner world where everything is self-regulated. They are very autonomous and extremely solitary. It's the sign that needs the least company. You know, they can spend time alone, uh, doing their own thing at their own pace. And in that introspection, there is a lot of that inner world. You know, they can love to read and they can invent things. So a lot of time spent on their own brings a lot of gifts and capacities. And it's interesting, this figure that I, the lady, Jessica Watson, who's a Taurus, and she uh, won some kind of award. She was one of these teenagers whom at age 16 went around the world alone on this uh, boat. And so imagine, uh, you know, Taurus sluggish? Ask Jessica. Of course, there are other things in the chart. We have to look at things holistically. But you will notice that when there's a repetition of Taurus, there is quite often talent, capacity, and self-determination, autonomy. So I also listed all these comedians who are Taurus sons and strong emphasis in Taurus in their charts, you know, from, you know, Seinfeld to Colbert and, and really uh, well-known comedians. And we don't tend to associate Taurus with humor. See, it is part of it. It's part of the, the sensual experience. It's part of the feel good. And it's also part of their, there's something about Taurus being authentic, having their own narratives, you know, relying on their own ideas, coming up, like I said, inventing things. So they're not going to be those who are stealing the jokes. They are going to be those who come up with original content. That's part of that excavation of Taurus. So who would believe? Let's thank Taurus for the humor. <clears throat> Gemini. Well, we must admit that there are some Geminis out there who give Gemini a bad rap, even though Gemini tend to have a bad reputation even before Trump and before Kanye. Um, but there's a bunch of Geminis who make this sign quite questionable. But the most common association with Gemini is that they're superficial, they're dishonest. <clears throat> and another thing is that they they travel short distances. That always puzzled me, like, what does that mean? So Gemini is an intellectual sign. That's where we develop our navigation abilities. So that's where our mind starts to observe decipher, connect, you know, the dots. So <clears throat> Gemini is really 
a sign that has to do with thinking and deep thinking. I'm not talking about watching Netflix documentaries and coming up with expert theories. However, Gemini's, you know, the shadow side of Gemini can be the emulation. You know, they they can copy content for sure. That's part of their things to be careful about. But otherwise, they are deep thinkers. Some of the, you know, people I know who really go uh, doing research on subjects and developing unique perspectives, unique understanding, and of course, the eloquence, you know, the ability to explain things uh, <clears throat> is very is very uh, prominent with, with Gemini. <clears throat> the other thing, you know, you can have really deep conversations and explore things uh, intellectually, not in a way that is superficial at all, at all. And most of the Geminis, you know, will be social. And they, you know, they are going to be those who engage with people from different uh, layers of society and, and socioeconomic level. You know, they're, they're very, they're mutable. So they're adapting to different sceneries and, and topics. And there can be the street smart as well as the academic. I mean, the, sometimes Gemini fear that they're not smart enough. That's part of their insecurity, is not knowing enough, is not having enough background. And so it is a sign that can fake it until they make it. <clears throat> but for the most part, they are very deep. And they can write, you know, really thoughtful ideas and, and explorations and research. So I'm also putting Angelina here because she adopted children from different nations. And that's something that's very typical about Gemini is that they are multicultural. It's the sign that is the most ethnically diverse. And I mean that by the fact that they're interest, interested in culture and interested in learning about other cultures. So they are, for the most part, very tolerant, open-minded, and will not travel just in their neighborhood. So it's true that Gemini relate to short journeys and to neighborly connections, you know, the very local mobility, but it doesn't end there. It doesn't, you know, Gemini's are walkers. They go and go and go and walk and walk. And for the most part, if you see strong Gemini in a chart, you can expect they're going to date people from different cultures. They're going to, you know, they're going to tell you about their travel lists, things that we tend to associate with the polarity of Sagittarius, which is known to relate to travel and tourism. Don't minimize, you know, don't reduce Gemini to walk in the neighborhood and the park. They are worldly and usually world-class citizen in the sense that they are wise, they're sophisticated, and they are sharp. <clears throat> so, thanks to Edward for saving the Gemini grace and bringing some intelligence and truth-telling and honesty and no cheating. On the contrary, you know, he's the one who exposed the cheating. Cancer, cancer, cry baby, weak, mommy's child. There's some truth to that. I know I'm not denying it's not completely false, but there is so much more to cancer because the misconception about cancer um, is that level of 
inadequacy, when in fact, what cancers need is to do what they want to do. You know, it's a, it's a sign that similar to Taurus is very deeply connected to themselves, which means they know exactly what they want. They know exactly what they want to eat and where they want to go and who they want to be with and what they want to do. So the, the real bottom line with cancer is that they can excel and they can be very tough, very strong, very resilient, but everything is on their own terms. So the weakness is not so much that they are frail and, and gonna break down. The weakness is more that they're not really adaptable. You know, cancers are very powerful if it's on their own terms. You know, they are kings and queens in their own domains. So Elon Musk, you know, is, is a cancer and he's an entrepreneur. I don't like him at all, but to his credit, he's definitely not, you know, a homebody and, and not doing much with his life. He's extremely creative, prolific, active. <clears throat> and, and part of it is the cancerian quality of, you know, being able to give personal attention, to meet people one-on-one, -on -one. even though he's dealing with global affairs, there's there's that intimacy with cancer, um, which I'm sure can bring a lot of quality to what they're doing. And that's part of the cancer virtue, is that because they're attentive, and they bring their own in everything they do, you will feel there's richness there. You know, there, there's something that you can relate to, something that is personable. And so Julian Assange obviously is not, you know, is a hero, counterculture hero, who was not afraid and not weak. But interestingly, you know, his destiny is that he's confined to a home and to a very limited space. So in some way, he's living his Cancerian nightmare in the fact that he can't be free to do whatever he wants. Tom Cruise, another cancer who's a daredevil, you know, doing all the stunts in his movies. And so, you know, definitely um, relatable um, and, and definitely someone who has his own ideas, his own points of view, his own perspective, and can be in a way strong-willed that way you know there's this level of stubbornness with cancer if they decide they're not going to do something there's no convincing it's they're very self-assured that way um so they can go very far if they are able to do it their own way obviously you know there is a level of vulnerability with cancer because it's so personal and because they are, you know, it's the sign that has to do with nourishing. Um, but on the other hand, it is because another words that I will use for cancer is high maintenance. They need a lot of attention. They need to do things their own way on their own terms. They have this strong will and they take a lot of energy, they absorb and process. But once, once they're ready, there is something incredibly rich, incredibly um, layered and, and deep and efficient and useful that they can deliver. So 
It's definitely not what it seems. You know, cancer can be the ones who people will not take seriously, but they come back, you know, in the least expected way to make a difference. Um, sometimes it we have to be very patient with that. That is true. Leo, obviously, Leo, you know, whatever somebody says, you know, describes Leo, it's going to be about this need for attention and they want compliment. And it seems like that's all there is about Leo, that they like compliment. And, you know, it's such a complex sign. It's such a rich sign that um, we need to unpack. There's more to Leos than looking into the mirror and self-aggrandizement. One of the people who definitely, you know, is responsible for staining Leo's reputation is George Santos. And if you're familiar with American politics, he's uh, this fellow uh, politician who lied about everything in his life, his resume, his credit credential, made up, you know, all kinds of things. So that's really the bad Leo. But it doesn't end there. It's not just about flattery. Think about Leo being a fire sign and entrepreneurial. And so they are some of the most productive people because they come here with a sense of destiny. They come here needing to lead a way, to forge things forward. And so there's something about the doing, creating, producing, producing, constantly doing that. And so Leo's never stop and they, their generosity can be immense and they're never done with life you know you see this generation of uh public figures born with pluto and leo they're not retiring because they feel youthful you know the biden who's going to be the oldest president who is the oldest president and trump you know He's going through so much and trials and, and lawsuits. And, you know, he's back on his campaign trail, preaching his gospel. You know, I have absolutely no praise for Trump as far as his ideas and what he represents. But as far as his Leonian energy, Mars in Leo on the Ascendant with Pluto in Leo generation, I mean, the guy doesn't seem to sleep. And, and he's motivated. So there, there's that. There's that life, you know. Leo is about feeling alive and, and being out there. So um, it's, it's incredible. The other thing is that Leo are animal lovers. You know, we tend to relate animals to Virgo because back in the days when people wrote about astrology, animals were mostly farm animals, functional, you know, the horses and the cows and um food to eat or or fields to harvest but today our relationship with animals you know is more personal they're we're more connected to them emotionally and <clears throat> you will see leos definitely treating their animals like their children so very very personal but they are also animal lovers on a more, on a wider scale. They are going to be uh, involved in rescues and in conservation. Um, there's there's a strong affiliation with animals. 
You know, it's the king of the animals. So unending creativity, the spark of life, the spirit that is bringing life wherever they go. Scorpio, uh, excuse me, Virgo, you know, yes, they can be neat freak. They can be pedantic. They can be, you know, running around on the perfectionists. But they're usually not, nothing about them is boring. And the reason is that Virgo is is a sign again, this combination of mercury energy, mental energy with earth resourcefulness and, and following Leo, you know, all these attributes of creativity, resourcefulness, self-sufficiency and detail oriented brings incredible talent. It's one of the most talented signs and has class. You know, Virgos are refined. They're usually ahead of the game, you know, as far as understanding quality. That's the thing is it's a sign that represents quality. And so some of them will be nerds. Some of them will be, um, you know, the, the obsessive, compulsive need freaks there is that but there is much more you know it's, it's about not reducing them to that and the other the other thing that is often overlooked with with virgos is that they rep they have the finest taste now taste is subjective and you're going to say well every sign has its own has its own taste and appeal but there's something about virgos when you see someone who is strikingly beautiful and you know head turning and is you know beauty industry you will often see tons of virgo there because there is that refinement that proportion that is definitely more about the the earth as an earth sign, it's very body oriented, very physical. Um, but there's something very agile and very refined. And as um, as you can see, you know, Sophia Loren and Beyonce and, and of course, uh, Michael Jackson and Iris, you you notice the dexterity, the the taste level, and and the class. You know these are people who have a lot of class. So there there's dexterity, there's taste, artistic, and and talented skills. You know, Virgos are are skilled. So um, the other thing that you want to pay attention to is imagination. We tend to think, and it's a misconception, that Pisces is the sign of imagination. But most Pisces have no imagination. And we're going to understand why. Those who have a lot of imagination are those who are more personal. The Cancer, the Leos, the Virgos have tremendous vision. They can see things because they are wanting to create them. So there's something, you know, maybe we should define imagination better in the sense that it's creative imagination. It's the ability to be artistic about your imagination. And so Virgos definitely have that ability to, you know, to think about things that have not been there yet. You know, their mind is busy thinking, anticipating, um, connecting dots.
So, Libra. Mm, Libra have usually a very good reputation, soft, fair. They love art. They love beauty and aesthetics, and they are peacemakers. But then we look at the world, and we realize that some of the current war mongers, namely Vladimir Putin and Benjamin Netanyahu, are Libra stellium people. And it's not a mistake, it's not a fluke. It's because the, this archetype is much more complex. And the reason is that Libra is essentially about balance. And when we strive for balance, we deal with imbalance. So it is true that Libra seeks cooperation and seeks connection in order to balance things. And Libra represents all the parts of ourselves that we are missing. That's why it's a relationship sign, because we seek to complete each other through others. <clears throat> so it's not clear cut. You know, it's not just one thing. And it's not systematically peacemaking. Actually, Libras can be contrarians. They bring controversy because they're always going to do something that, not always, but they tend to, to gravitate towards things that are not popular. It's also a non-conformist sign. You know, we tend to see them as agreeable and soft and, and pleasing. And there is that about Libra. But because it's a sign that seeks balance, it will immediately, like osmosis, gravitate to establish balance. It, it will go to the weakest point. And this is why they are often caught in controversies, because they share the least popular point of view, the underrepresented point of view. You know, if you are in a room full of people who want clean energy, and they're going to tell you that, you know, we should all uh, migrate to um electric cars and and uh, wind harvesting uh, energy the libra is going to be in the room and says and bring all the arguments that fossil fuel is actually better and and that we need to consider the fact that it's um scapegoated uh, and the same Libra, you know, visiting Trump uh, in a coal mine, um, trying to revive old energy resources, uh, then they're going to turn into the uh, progressive solar energy, um, wind energy advocates. So there's, there's something about always bringing the opposite view in order to create a sense of balance. So they're fighting within themselves. You know, they have an identity crisis, a constant identity crisis. And because of that, they're actually courageous in, in offering the least popular view, but a balancing act. And so you will see Libras um, who can be very controversial. You know, what's going on now in Israel is a good example. Being Bibi Netanyahu being a Libra is that, you know, there's something very unpopular. On the one hand, Israel being attacked, 
um, and in and wanting to defend itself. On the other hand, you know, the extreme violence and destruction of Gaza um, puts, you know, the world in a situation where there are so many gray areas, you know, what is the solution? And not just about this, this war, but how will we resolve the Middle Eastern conflict? So Libra are often found in situations where there is no clear solution, when it's not black and white, good guys, bad guys, where there's often a lot of gray areas and and a lot of factors to bring in which makes decisions extremely complicated. So Libra can be quite unpopular because of that. In extreme cases, talk about you know, agreeable versus contrarian. Libras can be traitors in the sense that they can side with the enemy, uh, with your enemy. And so you thought they would be loyal to you as friends, and then they, you know, they side with your nemesis. And you can feel betrayed. But from their point of view, it's just about offering a balanced perspective. So this, this uh, meme here about taking the side of your sworn enemy publicly is, is another form of controversy that Libra bring. And so in many cases, Libra are not bringing peace they're bringing reflection, they're bringing controversy, and they strive to bring balance. Scorpio, Scorpio's, you know, power, 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 sex, and, and magnetism, and wealth, and destruction, self-destruction. So, yeah. There is that, you know, there is a potential for that greed. And it's not just financial greed. It's it's just emotional greed. You know, Scorpios could be forever hungry for more and more and more. Um, but that's really a narrow, narrow definition for Scorpio. Because deep down, the reason why Scorpio can be greedy is the same reason that they can also be angels because they are the ones who are going to bring the necessary change. They are the one who see what's missing, what is dysfunctional, and they are going to fix it. They're going to go where other peoples don't dare to go. They are the detective, you know, who will pay, you know, who will witness what's being done. And they are the angels because it takes an angel to speak to the devil. It takes an angel to be able to walk in the dark alleys at night and do the work that other peoples don't want to do. When everyone's asleep, Scorpios are in action. And so they can be definitely obsessive about fixing and about confronting the evils and wanting to reform the world and, and confront leaders. So there's deep activism in Scorpio. And there's also deep courage. It's both physical courage and emotional courage and spiritual courage. So there's, you know, definitely that, that whole saying that Scorpio could be destructive, but in reality, they are the exorcists. And in doing so, 
they're usually um, bring the light where there's darkness. So um, you will see Scorpios pushing the boundaries in many different ways in order to try to find what works. You know, they're going to do the extreme diets. They're going to do the extreme fasting and the extreme vegan and the extreme paleo because they want to go where nobody went. They're going to try these new um, solutions. And they're going to also expose immediately what is not functional about the new solutions. So in that sense, they can also bring controversy because they are the bearers of the inconvenient truth. And it's interesting that Scorpios in that sense can also be the ones who will expose those who are extremes in their views. So there's something very, in a way, sober. As, as weird as it sounds, because Scorpios can go to the extreme of overdosing and drug abuse, but they are also the ones who can get out of it just by the power of their own will. You know, they won't need many AA meetings they can have the if if they have a conviction that they want to stop something they will so there's definitely intensity however in that intensity there are also those who are going to expose um those who get carried away you know if there's extreme conspiracy theories you may think, well, Scorpios are going to be the suspicious one who are um, are going to be anti-government and things like that. But the reality is that they they also they will see the shadow of of government, but they will also see the shadow of the conspiracy theorists. So they're they're not going to form alliances without really. Uh, looking what's under the surface and they're not gullible so it's it's a weird sign in that they can be so thorny on the one hand and difficult to live with but on the other hand you know be the angels and 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 be extremely loyal and will you know, go out of their way to support the needy. Interestingly, you know, when I worked in a in a um, humanitarian organization, everyone in the operating room, you know, a team of 12, 14 people were all Aries and Scorpios, moon, sun, or both. It was quite a learning experience. But that's part of it is because of that, you know, the courage to go where it's dark. Sagittarius. Sagittarius are usually, you know, the optimistic, the lucky, so forth, um, and open-minded. But there's a misconception about Sagittarius. You know, it's it's definitely over glamorized in the astrology schools and 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 world and you know the jupiterian positivity rubs on their reputation and they get away with a lot of stuff because there's something we all would like to have that kind of confidence but it is sugar coated you know, um, part of the thing is that, number one, 
Yes, Sagittarius love nature. They love the outdoors, generally speaking. And they can exert a lot of energy. You know, if they want to travel, they're going to go to a place where it can be physical, where they can dance, where they can drum. They're going to be attracted to cultures that are more indigenous, closer to nature. But they're not open-minded in the sense that they're interested in another religion or they're interested in other people's point of view. They're interested in debating. They're interested in being right. You know, there's a lot of self-righteousness. And, you know, one of the paradoxes of, Sag of Sagittarius is that it's a fire sign which is deeply personal and subjective. But it's also a sign that is transitioning from Scorpio into the transpersonal, the spiritual gateway. You know, you may have seen my video on the octaves where Pluto Mars, I discussed the Pluto Mars and Scorpio equation where Scorpio faces crisis and as a result of the crisis and the loss and the emotional difficulties, they are forced to open their channels from the personal to the transpersonal. So the gateway to the transpersonal, to the spiritual world, starts in Scorpio. And this is why Sagittarius is so optimistic and full of faith because there's hope the, the, the Scorpio opened the gateway and now Sagittarius feels like they have wings again and they can you know change things that they, there's there are solutions there's th th that intense need to liberate but the paradox of Sagittarius is that it's it's a very personal, self-absorbed sign, being a fire sign. And it's also a gateway to the spiritual and the transpersonal. And this is why Sagittarius, on the one hand, can explore very large truths and try to find deeper meanings. But on the other hand, they become too attached. They become... They start to project their own things. And once you try to own the truth and manipulate it, you lose it. And so there's there's that battle in Sagittarius between the lower self and the higher self. The subjective, it's mine uh, reality versus a all-encompassing, neutral state of mind. And there's an issue there synthesizing both. Eventually, the purpose, evolutionarily speaking, of, of Sagittarius is to bring the personal with the transpersonal. But until then, they, they can become fanatical because they end up adopting um, philosophical views and become too attached, lose perspective. And at its worst, Sagittarius can be bigoted, prejudiced. You know, they are the one who will uh, dislike certain ethnic groups or um, you know, have an idea about what women should do in this world and have all kinds of preconceived projections that are generalized on a transpersonal level. So that's a shadow, you know, that's an issue. So on the one hand, they are worldly, but they're not as refined as the Gemini Virgo, 
you know, they tend to be more on the wild side. And that's part of the virtue of Sagittarius is the connection to the natural world. Capricorn, the misconception, you know, conservative, um, very cautious, ambitious and and you know gray gray suits so think about david bowie or um marilyn manson both capricorn sons and and so and then some so there's something about the capricorn that is definitely misunderstood because Capricorn have to do with boundaries and have to do with testing what works. So they're, they're strategic, they're goal oriented, but they're always seeing, you know, what is the thing that's going to work? Sometimes it means that they are going to be conservative because, you know, if they want to succeed in life, you got to be a doctor or a lawyer uh, or, or a, an accountant. So they're going to go for the traditional vocations and traditional lifestyle and, and, you know, climb the ladder of the corporate world. But that's, you know, that's one layer of Capricorn. Another layer of Capricorn is that they're actually constantly testing boundaries, that they're constantly asking themselves, is this right? You know, what the preacher said, is this really the way to go? And what my teacher said and what my parents said. So they, 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 they actually are attracted to the forbidden. And it's interesting, you know, speaking about Marilyn Manson, part of what makes him so devilish, um, he does have a lot of Scorpio in his chart, uh, eighth house, and Mars in Scorpio. But part of the Capricornian quality is that he is, you know, he tested religion. He's basically reacting to religious indoctrination in his childhood and how he you know felt that religious people were hypocrites that they were preaching one thing and doing the opposite and that it wasn't true wisdom so there's a yearning for true wisdom that will take you on a uneven path so there's something about Capricorn, that is, as much as they can be conservative, they can also lose, lose those boundaries, crack the, the shells, and, and really go on a deep research about what is ethical, what is right, beyond what societal expectations are. Wild Capricorns, Aquarians, individualistic. Uh, the conception is that they're colorful and gregarious and unique, and they're weird, and that they're humanitarian. There is truth to that, but quite often not the way we think it. So this lady here, um, Iris is, you know, an iconic fashion mm -hmm. icon, is actually a heavy, heavy Virgo. So maybe, you know, she has a touch of Aquarius in her chart, but usually Aquarians are more in their heads. 
So they're not about show. You know, when you see someone so colorful, it's going to be fire, not air. Air are much more tamed. They're much more cerebral. And even though Aquarius definitely looks for unique ideas and they're going to think out outside the box, they are very self-conscious about showing off. And so usually they will not wear, you know, these very visible attires. Um, that's again, more of the fire in her. And she has Mars in Leo with all her Virgo. So you can see uh, the redness about that. So, you know, they, they Aquarian tend to be more dry and cynical, and they tend to be more sarcastic. They they have a disdain for the average. So they they will usually measure their words and measure and, and be conscious about their appearances. They're more of the observer. They observe life rather than take the stage. So they're not the clowns. They're not going to love cameras and, and, and be weird just for the sake of being weird. They look, they take photos, they take notes. And they can be dry scientists, you know, they can be researchers. But because Aquarians tend to think fast and tend to think ahead, they're also ahead of the curve. And that can make them feel extremely impatient about the average Joe and Joanne. So they don't have patience for people because they already are in the future. That's why there is an element of elitism in every industry in every part of life, Aquarius can be elevated above others. They can be the wealthier elite. They can be the intellectual elite. They can be the spiritual elite. Because they learn fast. They figure things out fast. Um they have taste for quality and they're smart. But because they're ahead, they may basically have no time for those who are behind. So this whole aspect of the humanitarian Aquarius is not so black and white. It's not so clear cut. They do want to bring progress. It is a sign that aspires to advance civilization but it's not personal. You know, if you hear Ayn Rand and her theories about humanity, where, you know, there's no place for weakness, you understand, you know, a side of Aquarius that is far from humanitarian. <clears throat> um, but on the other hand, you know, the virtue of Aquarius is that it, it brings solutions. It's a sign that will solve problems. Um, and they can be very unique and eccentric. But another myth, or at least misconception, is that they're individualistic. In many ways, Aquarian is an air sign, and it's one of the last signs, which means it's a collective sign. Aquarius operates in groups. Whether they choose it or whether life takes them there, there's an element of cooperation of the think tank process. 
Aquarius tend to work in teams, but they will choose their teams to be with people who are on their level, <clears throat> you know, who are fast thinker. The ones who are very individualistic are the fire signs. So, you know, I always say this, if you have musicians, Aquarius will be in a band. Leos will be the solo artist. So that's the definition of individuality. <clears throat> the, the individualism in Aquarius is that they are thinking differently and that they are bringing in new ideas and they're experimental by nature. So there's an element there of, you know, uh, differentiating themselves from the herd. But in reality, they are looking for their herd. They're looking for their tribe. They are community-oriented individuals, a sign that, you know, that's why they, they tend to attract cults. Is because the cult is on the one hand alternative, different, but it's a group of people, it's a community. And so the individualism is actually a group individualism. So I hope that makes sense. So Pisces, misconception is that they're sensitive and kind which they can be, you know, I'm not saying I see and I'm not, that they're fragile and that they have a strong imagination and that they're creative. What we tend to forget about Pisces is that it's a transpersonal sign. It's not personal. Pisces can be intimate, connect with people personally on a global level. They, they know strangers, they connect with the group and with the tribe, <clears throat> but they will never remember details. They won't remember your birthday because they're not personal. They are transpersonal. There's something ex completely passive about Pisces. And imagination is related to active. You have an active imagination. <clears throat> so when you're passive by nature, you don't necessarily have imagination. What happens with Pisces is that the veils for them are often thin and they can feel things or see things that other peoples don't, but it's not because of imagination. It's because it happens to them. It comes to them. They're not actively seeking something. So it's a distinction. This is why you will see often Pisces who will lead extremely minimalistic lives, very plain in their taste. You know, they are the ones who are going to wear gray shirts and, and, you know, live on a mattress on the floor and, you know, barely have light in their apartment because they're not detail oriented. They're not going to decorate and, and pay attention to um, flavors and textures and they couldn't care less. You know, they are not in their body for the most part. You know, Pisces is a transcendental sign. And so all these physical comforts and, and art and it's like, it's a waste of time and energy for them, for the most part. <clears throat> Usually where the artistic side comes in 
is when Pisces connects with other signs, like Pisces and Aries, Pisces and Taurus, Pisces and Leo, Pisces and Virgo. Then that combination of the detail focus and, and the taste and flavors that the personal signs bring along with the Piscean transcendental qualities can bring artistic greatness and, and uh, imagination. But as, you know, isolated on its own, Piscean are just drifting. They go with the flow and they just want to be done with this incarnation to begin with. You know, they're, they're not entrepreneurial. They don't engage as much. They are, you know, the, the good word is that they like simplicity and are minimalists. And quite often can be awkward with social cues because they don't remember to call back and they don't know, you know, what how to dress for a certain event. You know, they're out of their body. Um, so they're not spe specifically attached. And they could sleep on that old couch, moldy, torn, you know, pizza from last week. That can work. Um and now I, you know, I have this uh, image of a hunter. You will see that many, many hunters, people who love being outdoors and to love hunting for their food are going to have a strong Pisces. And so it, it departs from this idea of being, you know, so delicate and, and compassionate not that hunters are necessarily not compassionate, but why are Piscean attracted to the hunting? Because it's in their point of view, it, it's they're in nature. And there's something very simple, primal about that. It takes them back to simplicity of hunting for your food, harvesting your own you know, berries and then butchering your own food. You know, th that whole aspect of living in nature is very Piscean, living minimally. And so it's, you know, it's not what astrologers often tend to think about Pisces, but it's often what's out there. Um, Pisces will often be soldiers and they're often going to be hunters. And they can care a lot, you know, it, but they can also be completely detached. And in the sense, Pisces will say, it's not up to me, you know, I have to eat. And that's what I'm going to do. You got to do what you got to do. There's something very fated, fatalistic about Pisces. Um, and so they can be the most down to earth, dry matter of fact. So that's an interesting uh, way of understanding this archetype. And it can be very spiritual. But it's not necessarily spiritual in the traditional sense of, you know, singing home and doing yoga. You know, Pisces spirituality is usually um, the here, be here and now, and less is more, you know, that kind of thing. So I hope, you know, it makes you think a little differently and encourages you to to learn astrology from real life experience not only from books and youtube videos but if 
you want to study from YouTube videos, please subscribe because uh, we can talk more about misconceptions and other fun stuff. And I encourage you to also join my Facebook group, Evolutionary Skies, where we speak about astrology from an evolutionary astrology point of view, and it's lively and fun. Thank you, everyone, and uh, until next time.